everyone, welcome to the show. My name is I, and this is the Classroom Without Walls weekly live streaming show. And join me live today. Oh my God, it's the one and only Mark Schaefer. Uh, there are, as I have been promoting this interview like crazy, there are a I few noticed. people. <laughs> there are a few people who made such a profound impact on what I do as a college professor and as an entrepreneur. And Mark is such an amazing mentor, a leader, and I love all of his books and uh, blog articles and the content, his content has helped me to grow so much. And today we are going to discuss one of his best selling books, which is also his latest book, marketing rebellion and i see that we have so many people yes in the background join us already from all over the globe and uh please let us know where you are joining us from i also see some of my students are here hey guys thank you so before we get started with uh today's q a and i'm just going to briefly introduce mark and mark is a globally recognized keynote speaker blogger, educator, best-selling author, social media and digital marketing guru or expert. And uh, I love all of his books. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, they all changed my life. And today we are going to discuss his newest book, Marketing Rebelling in the background. And uh, so thank you so much for joining us live, Mark. Oh, and I've been truly, looking truly forward honored. to it. <laughs> I've been looking forward to it. So honored to have you here. Do you want to add anything to my very brief introduction? Um, ready to go? No, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Bring okay. it on. Wow, we have so many people join us already. Hey, Vicky, Nikki from the UK. And let us know which country from the US, from New Jersey, many of my students. And today we are going to discuss how to be more human. So if you have more questions, any questions related to social media and digital marketing, uh, please leave them in the comment section. I will do my best to show uh, show you questions and uh, answer your questions, let Mark answer your questions as much as possible. So first tell us why this book at this time, Mark? Well, if you, um, I, 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 I discovered today as I was cutting the grass, this uh, dawned on me <laughs> that if you, if you read all of my books, it, it sort of like shows the evolution of my thinking and the evolution of marketing in a way. So my first real book was, was Return on Influence when I talked about uh, it was the first book on influence marketing in 2012. I said, the power is shifting from mm -hmm. companies to the people. So this mm -hmm. was, I was, it was like, wake up everyone. Look at, look at what's, mm -hmm. what's happening then. So how does that happen? Well, to do that, you've got to create content. So I wrote born to blog and I wrote social media explain. And then all of a sudden there was too much content. <laughs> And uh, we were getting into content shock. So what do you do? How do you stand out? So I wrote the content code. Now, what about an individual? Could you use content to help an individual stand out? Well, so I struggled with that one, came up with known. So mm -hmm. today, what the marketing rebellion is about is really all those things, how all those things are evolving. And back when I wrote the return on influence in 2012 and talked about this, the power was shifting mm -hmm. in some ways that's being completed, right? The customers not only are gaining power, they have the power. They're in control. Two thirds of our marketing is occurring mm -hmm. without us. The customers are the marketers. The customers are the marketing department. That's how much has changed in seven years. And so that's sort of been the evolution of my thinking. And that's why I wrote this book to talk about this shift because mm -hmm. the problem I see is so many people are locked into a certain way of doing things without realizing how much the world has really changed. And mm -hmm. as I started to do the research and I started to realize how much has changed, 
it was really a shock to me. I learned a tremendous amount from writing this book. It's changed me mm -hmm. as a marketer. Wow, this is amazing. You already mentioned so many great points. And we are going to go back to some of the points you mentioned. And uh, at the same time, I want to say hi to everyone. Literally join us from the past, from the present, and from the future. Different time zones. People are all joining us from the future. That's crazy. I'm you've, from the you've, future. You've cracked the code. <laughs> It is already uh, Thursday for me, Thursday okay. morning, 6 a.m. There so you the go. Future. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so this is so uh, like uh, I love your book so much because the book really makes me rethink uh, digital marketing or social media marketing. And you mentioned that two thirds of marketing is not actually under the control of marketers, but generated by consumer activities. So can you please explain the profound implication of this shift in terms of how we should think and approach marketing? Well, when I, when I was a young man growing up in business, believe it or not, I mean, this was before uh, the internet, before social media. And I would say, back then it would be accurate to say that businesses were in control because the only way a person could really learn about your products or learn about your brand or, and services is through our advertising through our marketing messaging mm -hmm. so if so i said 90 percent of it we were in control now with social media uh and and with uh, review online reviews and with influencers and word of mouth, um, then now the conversation, the power has shifted and the, the, the customers are in control. In the old days, you know, I hate to call myself in the old days, but I guess it was the old days at this point, 30 years ago, you know, we were in control and a brand was what we told you. We controlled that idea. We controlled that message. Mm -hmm. Today, a brand is what consumers tell each other. They control that idea. They control the conversation. So the difference is we have to change our mindset to think about how do we get invited to that <sighs> two thirds? People don't want our ads. They don't see them, <laughs> they don't want them. If they see them, they don't believe them. They wanna block them and get rid of them. Mm. So we can't buy our way in. We have to be invited into that two thirds. And that's a really different way to think. I, I, I whenever mm -hmm. I was working on this book, I, I'm not kidding. There was a point where I, I kind of lost my breath realizing mm -hmm. I don't know what it means to be a marketer today. That's <sighs> how different it really is. And as I was writing the book, I was determined I've got to, I've got to figure it out. That's what the book is, is, is about. I was, I was like teaching myself, what marketing is really going to be about in the future. Wow, I, I love that point. Do you think that is kind of the most challenging part of writing this book, kind of redefine, even like unlearn what you have been thinking about marketing compared to many of your other best-selling books? Well, the, the, this, this was a very, very uh, challenging book. <clears throat> and I, I thank you for for reading it and and talking about it so much and you know that when i write a book there's no fluff in in the book mm -hmm. every single page there's an idea or oh. an inspiration something to learn from one of the nicest compliments someone said i, I had to stop reading mark's book because my highlighter ran out <laughs> <laughs> so that was a great compliment and there was a point where this it was it was really becoming so difficult to capture these ideas. I mean, there are big, big ideas in this book. This is a a vast book. The scope of the book is 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 really pretty vast. And there was a point last summer where I just thinking, what what am I doing? What am I doing? Why am I doing this? This is so much work. So. I mean, this this book was more work than than any of my other books by far. Wow. 
I wanted to get it right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's great, and it's backed up by solid research. So I saw lots of questions from the audience coming. I'm going to show some of the questions. And here is one question from the one and only John, who is going to connect with you again in uh, in the UK for the event. So yeah. John asked, yeah, how can solopreneurs service providers be more human? Well, you know, I think the, the, there's a huge advantage today for entrepreneurs and small business people to really own this because, well, let me give you just a, just a quick example. So um, Tesla has a higher market value than Ford Motor Company. And I think it's because people, uh, one reason is because people love Elon Musk. They, they mm -hmm. trust him, they love him as a visionary. He inspires people. Who do you love at Ford? Who do you love mm -hmm. at Chevy? So increasingly, the personal brand is the brand. Mm -hmm. That's much easier for a small business to do than a big company to make this transition. And I think John Asperian has really been sort of a role model here in connecting to his audience in a, in a, in a relentlessly helpful way, which is his, yes. his, his slogan. And... And so that's what he's known for. That's part of his mm -hmm. brand. His brand is the company. The company is him. So oh. I think it, it's going to be almost effortless in some ways for small business owners to be this human brand. The, the first exactly. thing you have to do, the, the, the easiest step is to, to look at your company and think, am I doing anything that I would hate if I was a customer? You know, wow. become a customer yourself. And if you're doing anything that people hate, stop mm -hmm. it. Just stop it. I was really surprised. I used that line in my speech at Social Media Marketing World and people, people cheered. I think that hit something very deep in them that they know they're uncomfortable with a lot of the things we're doing in the marketing world today. And if we're doing things to to, to disrespect people, to disrespect their privacy and their time and their and their personal information, we just have to stop. And we have to get mm -hmm. out there and discover what do people love. And then we have to go do that. We have to, we have to reconnect and build that emotion uh, but that, because that's what's been lacking in our businesses today. But I think yeah. small businesses are ideally positioned to win in this world of the marketing rebellion. Wow, I think that is music to many people in my audience because most people who are joining us, they are small business owners and entrepreneurs. So that's great. And I agree with you. And John, he's really amazing. Everyone should follow him on LinkedIn. And here's another question from my friend Arsalan. And uh, he asked you the importance of consumer experience. And also actually one of my questions is, you were talking about how brands and maybe even small business owners, we need to be invited and um, to join consumers' conversations about us, right? Because I remember you shared in an interview lately and um, how people perceive our brand is not so much about what we say, but what other people say. So can you explain to us like consumer experience and how can we even get invited to join their conversations about us? Yeah, well, I think, I think these two questions definitely uh, go together. So the, the biggest idea I think is that today, Two thirds of our marketing is occurring without us. Our customers are our marketers. So we have to think, oh. how do we help our customers do the job? They want to talk about the things that they love. Um, and so how can we give them a story that's authentic and interesting and relevant and, and mm -hmm. timely to, um, to, to carry our story. I'll give you an example. I was reading yesterday about the founder of Everlane. Everlane is an on online retailer that I featured in my book. And there was a story about him, how he is obsessed with mm -hmm. getting rid of all plastic mm -hmm. in his company. 
And I thought this was such an inspiring story. And they said he was trying to find something to eat in, a, in an airport and, he, and he's a very healthy person. And he passed every restaurant by and eventually bought a McDonald's hamburger because it was wrapped in paper and everything else used plastic. And now here's a story that's interesting and authentic and relevant. And I'm telling this story to you because it meant something to me. Everlane right now has entered the two thirds. Mm. I'm the marketing department for Everlane right now. I'm telling their story. I went and bought clothes on Everlane. I don't even really like their clothes that much. <laughs> <laughs> But I like, but now I'm, I'm like, I'm, I have this emotional connection to the company. When I studied them, when I was writing my book, I just was, it's like, wow, they're transparent on the bottom of every page. They tell you how much it costs to make their clothes. So that's part of customer experience, right? You've, you've got to create something, an experience, an event, a conversation, uh, a story that makes people go, wow, that's something different. Mm -hmm. That's something I believe in. And I'm going to share that with my friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. This, I love this uh, story and a uh, great example. So here is another question from my audience. And somehow, I, because right now we are live on multiple platforms and I couldn't show this comment, but this question is from from my friend Alberto, and he asked you to talk about technology and marketing and SEO and chatbots. Are those human or inhuman practices? And uh, what do you, what's your take on them? And how are they influencing and impacting or affecting us to practice this be more human approach that you advocated, Mark? Well, this is a, it's it's a very great question. It's a very it's a very big question. So let me address it in in a, in a couple of ways. First of all, the 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 biggest problem we have in marketing today is we're obsessed with technology. We're preoccupied with technology. Mm -hmm. Technology has become the enemy of great marketing, not because technology is is bad it's because technology is so good and so easy and so cheap and it just becomes intoxicating and we'd rather spend time with our dashboard instead of our customers now so that's point one point two is technology can absolutely help us be more human if we use technology in a transparent way that takes down the barriers between people. We're doing that right now. Mm -hmm. You see my face, you hear my voice, you hear my passion, my stories. So you're, so I'm making some human impression on you mm -hmm. only because of this technology. I just saw we had someone listening in from Nigeria. When you, I know. It's sort of miraculous, you know, how we're connecting in so many parts of the world. We're using technology to take down barriers and be more human. So look, the world of you know artificial intelligence is coming, it's coming out at as fast. We have a decision to make. We can use AI to become even worse marketers and abuse people even more, or we can use artificial intelligence to, to, to take down these barriers and, and, and create this amazing uh, human connection. And you know, so, so many companies are so bad today. Even if, even if AI gets you, you know, one level above really sucking, it's going to improve mm -hmm. things, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to help you be more human. And I think AI also has the promise of relieving so many of our work burdens, so we can spend more time on activities like this, talking to people, having meetings, going to networking meetings learning about what's going on with our customers. So I'm I'm optimistic that that we'll make the decision to use it the right way. 
Wow, this is uh, really, really good. Actually, if you guys are not subscribed to Mark's uh, blog, you guys should. I'm going to share the link in the comment section. And one of your latest uh, blog article, you talks about AI and uh, storytelling, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from the article is, a very profound statement that you made approaching the end of the article. You were talking about that emotional connection with an actionable audience. It's the only strategy that we have left to remain relevant in the coming years. Can you just explain a little bit more about this? This like I just love this emotional connection and actionable audience. It's the only strategy. So just explain on this strategy a little bit more. Uh, the, the the theme of this blog post was um, a, a session I went to at South by Southwest, which demonstrated how computers can now write movie scripts. Mm -hmm. which is pretty stunning. Uh, of course, if you can write movie scripts and poetry and rap lyrics, it's pretty easy to write a blog post and it's it's coming. I'm surprised it isn't mm -hmm. even already here. It's, it's starting to work its way into the newspaper business. So if you think we've got too much content now in the next two years, it's gonna get just out of control because these computers will be able to generate content and never stop and never quit and never get sick and mm -hmm. never wait for a paycheck. So uh, it's gonna be absolutely overwhelming. Now, the point that I was making is I'm not, I'm not really that afraid of it because people read my blog because it's me. I had this lovely uh, note from a woman who said, I start my day with you. I get a cup of coffee. I open up my email and I read your post. I've become part of the fabric of her life. There's a, an emotional connection and a trust. And I would say <sighs> in, in some cases, even, even love. I mean, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think you can create wonderful, wonderful, truly sincere connections with people online. And you, you've proved that too. You've been a, a role model for that and how you do Aww. that. And um, so I think that's that's our hope is the emotion. I, maybe someday we'll be able to fall in love with robots, um, you know, but I, I still think the human to human connection is important and that's the last thing we're gonna have left to remain mm -hmm. relevant in this bot dominated world. Yeah, oh, I love that. You guys, now. I'm going to- sh Start now. <laughs> Yes, that's the second part of the sentence. Start now before it is too late. Right. So I really love that. Yeah, I also remember uh, in one of your Facebook posts, you were making some uh, statement about some observations you made at this year's South by Southwest. You were talking about how last year there were so many sessions talking about chatbots, but this year, not that many, right? Well, I think... Um that's sort of the 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 hype cycle around technology is everybody mm. gets excited about it and they think it's going to be here but I, I think chat bots um are still a year or two away for for most businesses i mean if you're a big business with lots of transactions like an airline or a hotel or an insurance company then uh, of course chat bots make sense right now but for most other companies it's uh, it's it's hard to, to get it right. It's expensive to get it right. All that technology is is certainly going to improve, um, but it's probably a year or two away for for most of us. Yeah, yeah. Here's another question from one of my students, and he asked you if you post content on a daily basis, Mark. <laughs> well, that's really easy to find out. Just go to my blog. <laughs> Mark, uh, like a uh, bill, Mark has been blogging for 10 years. So that is true dedication. Even when you are on vacation, yeah. uh, you write your blogs a hell of time and, and you just have to show up, you know, be consistent. Yeah, so I, I usually blog um, uh, twice a week. Uh, I usually have four posts on, on my site a week, uh, three or four. Um, what I'll do is Monday, I'll write a post. Tuesday, sometimes I'll have a, 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 a feature like from a friend, somebody that I that I trust and I believe in. Uh, Wednesday, 
uh, I have a set of five uh, contributing columnists who have been, have been writing on my blog for years. And I just like that because it brings in diversity. It brings in new ways of thinking. I don't want it to just be all about me. I want to challenge people in other ways. And then Thursdays, there's another post about me. And usually the Monday post is sort of about business and strategy. And the Thursday post is a little bit about kind of the, the human part of business. At the top of my blog, it says marketing, strategy, humanity. And that's what I try to, to cover. That's sort of my, my sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Love that. I will definitely I will make sure to share the link. We literally have like so many people from different countries and so many comments. I'm really having a hard time catching up on the comments. So you guys just be more patient with me. So I saw one question earlier from my friend Suzanne from Scotland, and she's asking you to share some like stories or good examples of a uh, customer service, consumer experience. And mm -hmm. you have so many interesting stories from your book, Mark. Well, I'll try to be, since we have so many questions, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um, but my, my favorite company today is probably uh, Glossier. And, the, and if, you, if you read my book, Marking Rebellion, um, and, and you look at the, at the things you need to work on today, Glossier is doing it all, and they're doing it well. It starts with a personal brand, emotional connection. The company mm -hmm. was started by a blogger. Um, she, the, the, the theme of the com company, it's a skincare company. She wants to, to create a skincare company. That's your friend. It's not talking down to you. Her cust, if you go to her site and you see the people on the site demonstrating the products, they're not models. They're her customers. Mm. She's making the customer the hero, the customer, the center of the story. When she sends out her products, uh, it's all very social media oriented. She doesn't do advertising. All of her sales are coming from word of mouth advertising. She's in the two thirds. So if you want to look at one company and read, you know, one story in my book that says it all, it's, it's Glossier. It's G L O S S I E R. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see there are quite a few fans of this brand in the comment section. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, awesome. And I think I saw, uh, you guys, if I didn't catch up on your question, please, if you don't mind, just like resend the question again. And so I want to make sure that I really uh, ask your questions and uh, so we get the most out of this. And uh, so one of my uh, other questions for you, Mark, is like, can you give us, like this question is going to sound silly, right? So far our conversation, we're just kind of wrapping up here, has been talking about, you know, be more human, building that emotional connection. And so can you give us some like best practices or examples or tactics in terms of how to be more human? So are there certain ways that we should do like practices, do's and don'ts that make us more human? Well, I think we covered some of those today in terms of looking at what are you doing in your company that people hate? So that's the first step, mm -hmm. stop doing that. If you're doing stuff that people hate, like spamming and robocalling, stop that. You know, one of the things, the themes in the book is, is that marketers have stopped really connecting with their customers because they're mm -hmm. relying too much on technology. So get out and let people see your face. You know, go meet your customers, learn about what's going on with them. Another key idea is to bring people together, let mm -hmm. them see your face and hear your voice. It's the difference between listening to a song on the radio and going to a concert <laughs> with your friends to see your favorite band. That becomes an experience and an emotional connection you never forget. It's one of the things I learned while I was writing my book that so many companies told me when I brought people together, it changed everything. I heard mm -hmm. that over and over and over again. It's one of the things I've been reflecting on. I haven't brought people together myself in a long time. 
since 2013 was the last time I had my own conference. So that's one of my goals is to look wow. at bringing people together and having my, my own conference. Is it too early to share? Are you already organizing a conference or are you uh, thinking about it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm committed to doing it. I think it's going to be something small. Um, I think that's just, that's just my style. I mean, I, I, I did a conference uh, called Social Slam and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And mm. the last year we had it, uh, just in the third year, we had like 600 and 50 people there from 28 states and six different countries. Wow. And it was just, it, it was getting too big. And I couldn't really connect to people on a personal basis. And I, the, the, I think the, those days are just over for me. So I, I, I think I'm going to do something small that's maybe, you know, like 30 or 40 people. I you think invitation only, probably. Yeah. Would, yeah. But that's, well, it wouldn't be invitation only because, you know, I, I, I don't want, I don't want to create a bubble. I mean, I, I would mm -hmm. want, I would want different types of conversation. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I've got some ideas. Yeah. I look forward to it, but I definitely agree with you regarding the live like experience and how that brings everyone together. And I met you a few times. I read your book. I, I, listen to a podcast, read your blogs, but every time when I see you in person and there's just so much more like to that interpersonal connection than reading a book or even listening to your voice or even watching you mm -hmm. on video. So that face-to-face -face connection is just so amplifies everything. Yeah. 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 And it's something that's that, that anybody can do, you know, it, yeah. you don't have to have a, a big event. You can just, you can just say, Hey everybody, I'm going to be at this, coffee shop come out and see me it could be that simple mm. that's such a great simple way to be more human yeah so here's another question yeah. from Arsalan and he's asking how to have a balance between emotional stories and psychological manipulation should we even do that uh, what, what's your take on this um well um i i think the the, the difference is is authenticity, which is a word that's that's used too much and overused. It's a word I don't really like that much. Maybe a better word is honesty or truth, because if you tell stories from your heart in a way that helps people, I think people will know that's true. Mm -hmm. People can sense a fake today oh. pretty easily. You know, I mean, we're, we're just becoming so sensitive and the digital natives today, the people who grew up with the internet, they can, they can stiff out a fake in a hundred, a hundred words or less. So um, uh, I think if you're trying to manipulate people, that's going to, that's going to be pretty easy to, to, to figure out. So um, I think people do reward honesty and they do reward connecting in an emotional way. And by the way, it's not easy for me to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I, I grew up in a culture and a family where you don't talk about your emotions. You don't show your emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was, I, I mean, I was, I never cried. I was afraid to cry. I was mm -hmm. afraid to be emotional. And so it's something I've had to sort of experiment with and, and grow into over the years. And, you know, I look at people on the web, like, like Ginny Dietrich has been a great role model for me where mm -hmm. she just presents herself so easily, so effortlessly mm -hmm. and connects in such a great personal and human and emotional way. I say, gosh, if she can do it, maybe I can do it. And I would try and I would take little steps. And every time I did, people would say, well, that was really cool. Oh, really? Okay. Well, maybe I'll try that again. So yeah. I, do, I do get rewarded for it, but, but I'm still a work in progress for sure. Yeah, yeah. This is such a great point because I know many of my friends in the live audience, they are very camera shy. And I remember at the social media examiner, the conference, and one of my key takeaways is to do more like live video, like video content. So you, I remember you also shared before you are not very comfortable with like being on camera or like doing live. And so what's your take on the video content or live streaming content? Do you think we should embrace it? And what's the future of like, in terms of being more human and uh, you're laughing. I'm laughing. 
<laughs> yeah, because you 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 just you didn't know this, but you just started a rant. <laughs> so, um, well, first of all, I, I think everyone should embrace the type of content that brings them joy. Oh. So, you know, you're a natural of getting on video and connecting to the audience. I'd love just to watch you uh, tonight, you know, really sort of acknowledge people and reward people and, you know, tease out questions. So obviously this is something that's very natural uh, to you. Now, I'm, I don't really, I like blogging because I'm sort of more cerebral. I like to sort of edit things and think about things. And so blogging sort of, sort of fits mm -hmm. for me. I'm not natural with a camera. It's like, I feel like as a, Hey, look at me, look at me. And that's just not my natural state. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing I do want to say, um, which is a very important point. Um, I talked about this on my last podcast episode that I was really, very, very disappointed with, you know, one of the outcomes of social media marketing world this year is that everybody walked away saying, okay, we need to do more video. We need to do more mm -hmm. video. We need to do more live streaming. And so one of the problems with marketing today, social media marketing, content marketing, whatever, is that marketers flock to the latest thing and ruin it. Mm -hmm. oh. And 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 we're like lemmings. We we just we follow something and go over the cliff. So two years, what was it? Two years ago, Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Everybody said Snapchat is the next Facebook. I everybody has to be on Snapchat. So all the lemmings went over to Snapchat and they fell off the cliff, right? Mm -hmm. Now Snapchat is not the right content mm -hmm. for everybody. Everybody shouldn't be on Snapchat. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are canceling their accounts now. I had someone do a guest post on my blog that said Snapchat is perfect if you're if you're sort of random and goofy. That explains why I'm not good at Snapchat because no mm -hmm. one ever said that Mark Schaefer is one random and goofy dude. So I, you know I'm just I'm not natural. But, but so so you've it, you've forget about what the gurus say, just forget oh. it. Forget the advice. It's got to be something that brings you joy. It's got to oh. be something that connects you to your audience in a, in a in a powerful way, in a in a sustainable way. If you're not having fun and it's not bringing you joy, you're going to quit, and you mm. you can't quit. You've got to keep on going and growing and connecting with your audience. It takes time oh. to make it work. So don't just do mm -hmm. what everybody else is doing. The, the key to great marketing, to building a great personal brand is not conformity. Oh. It's not doing what everybody does. It's not being a lemming. You go do where, what your heart tells you to do what's going to bring you joy and what's going to connect to your customers. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about what social media marketing world tells you to do and everybody else is doing. You know, everybody said do more. You know, there's all these people starting daily videos. Why? <sighs> Nobody is interesting every day. You're just, you're creating random acts of content. You're littering the social media stream. You know, it, it might be good for a few people, that's their angle. That's what makes them different. But that doesn't mean everybody has to do it. Uh, you know, so look, that's my rant. It's just I love it. But just follow your own heart. Don't do it because you think that you're missing out on something. Wow. There's so many great points. And I so agree with you, Mark. And uh, you really have to, we really have to discover what inspires us. You know, for me, just video content is easier. And uh, like quite a few of my friends telling me, I you need to start a podcast. I don't know. I just don't feel so excited. I just love video content. So yeah. really, I, I it is hard. You know, I have only been doing this if, for I two mean, years. If, if you're a small business or an entrepreneur that has limited resources, you need to do one thing. You need to do one thing. This is the this is the anti 
Gary Vaynerchuk message. Gary Vaynerchuk says, be everywhere, be everywhere. You got to be on everything. You have to be everywhere. Here's what I say. Bullshit. You cannot be everywhere because here's why. You can't be excellent everywhere. You need to be excellent to stand out today, right? What's the TV shows that we watch today? Game of Thrones. It's like a movie, right? You've got to be excellent to stand out in this noisy world. So pick one thing. It, you know, if you're doing a blog and then you decide to do a podcast, if you, if it's going to make your blog less wonderful, less mm -hmm. you know beautiful, don't do it. Mm -hmm. You have to create content every day, and the only thing in your mind has to be, I will never let you down. When you spend time with me on my blog, on my video, on my live stream, whatever you choose to do, just be so great and so interesting and so helpful that you'll never let people down. And that's how you'll attract an audience. And I'm just not sure you can be in two or three or four or five places and not let wow. people down. I mean, at some point you have to do some work, right? <laughs> Exactly. And I feel like I'm already not sleeping much. And uh, it is just mm -hmm. like really a lot. And uh, and uh, this is just, just so many great points. I'm just watching the time here. I really want to respect your time, Mark. And we are literally just wrapping up here and uh, share with us what are you working on? What is next for you? Some Something new, another book or some other exciting projects? Share with us. And how can we support you? Well, um, I mean, honestly... I mean, you do a great job because I know that you talk about my 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 book a lot. And I mean, today, the power on the web isn't from creating a video mm -hmm. or writing a book if nobody sees it or nobody reads it. The, the, the power of content today only is through transmission if people are sharing <sighs> it and talking about it, right? So if you if you enjoy my book, if you love my book, leave a review on Amazon. If you enjoy it, tell others, if you in, enjoy it, uh, uh, that's, that, you know, helps. That's, that's something that can help me in terms of what's next. I'm, I'm right now. I'm still recovering from this, from this, <laughs> what, what's over here, that one still recovering, still recovering from that. Um, but I am starting to think about, you know, I, 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 I want to, do something big and different because, you know, I'm 58 now. I'm looking into the last third of my life and I want to look at this as a way to start something, not end something. And so I, I want to create something new that uh, takes advantage of this wonderful platform that I have, this wonderful audience that I have. Um, you know, I'm just in an amazing place in my career where people listen to me, they believe me, and people tell me every week, uh, sometimes every day, you've changed my life. That's the best performance review you could ever have. And so, I mean, if you live a life and you hear that one time in your life, what a worthy life that is. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I hear every every day and every week. So I don't want to let that go. If I, you know, I, I've got a way to, that I'm helping people here in a meaningful way. And I just want to think about ways I can maybe do that in a bigger way. Wow, that is so profound. And you have definitely changed my life, my personal life, my professional life. Guys, I still remember a few years ago when I first connected with you in person and you told me to stop putting myself down. And because I tend to do that a lot, and really Mark just made me cry. And uh, I reconnected and, with you and, again and this year. And the thing year. is, in, in that time period, I've watched you bloom. Oh. You've bloomed. You okay. and everybody on this on this show today will tell you the same thing. You have just bloomed and become this amazing social media uh, flower that we all love. You're a beloved person on the web, and so oh. I just I love the way that you're that you're owning your power and that you're 
that you're helping others and working so hard to build your personal brand in a meaningful way. So I'm really happy with the progress that you made. And I'm really proud of you for the, the way you've worked so, so hard to build an audience that loves you. Oh, thank you so much. I try not to cry, but thank you so much. Every time I talk to you, I cry. But <laughs> oh boy, but you it really that. shows you know, how much you touch my heart. You know, like such a great message. And uh, guys, if you haven't got a copy of uh, Mark's uh, book, please make sure. And I'm going to give uh, three books, three copies of Mark's book for free. I just got oh, this idea you. right now. So if you share this uh, live streaming interview on whatever social media platforms that you use, share this and please make sure you tag me. I'm just going to randomly select three people to give you either an audible version or a hard copy or whatever digital copy you choose and you pray for. And I want you to read Mark's message and make sure you give him a good review because I read this book at the beginning of this year and it literally changed my life. And I'm going to revisit the book again. So it's such a great book. And tell us more about where can people learn and discover more about you on which social media platform you are most active? Well, it's easy to, to find me. Uh, you can find everything about me at businessesgrow.com. Uh, my blog is there. As I said, I've been doing that for 10 years now. Just celebrated my 10th anniversary, literally. And uh, I have a podcast. I'm, I'm super excited about the podcast because I have a new co-host. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brooke Sellis is my new co-host. And she has just brought, in, brought a whole new level of, of energy. And she's like challenging me in no, new ways. And uh, it's like, wow, I can't wait to do the next show with her because she's just bringing so many new ideas to, to the show. So that's uh, awesome. And at businessesgrow.com, you can find my books. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty balanced. Um, I've been spending lately probably more, more time on LinkedIn, but I'm active on Twitter and uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube. But my, I mean, my, my social media drug of choice is definitely my, my blog. So if you subscribe to my blog, that's where you'll get all my best thinking and all my best ideas for free. I also love following you on Instagram, Mark. You are really fun oh, yeah. on Instagram. Instagram is, for me, it's not business at all. It's just kind oh, of God. fun. Uh, you know, you're not going to get any ads or business advice on Instagram from me. You, you'll you'll basically get pictures of of of, of rocks, flowers, and musicians. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah. So before we say goodbye to each other, here's a quick question from my friend Alberto, uh -huh. and uh, so he asked you, uh, the manifesto for human centered yeah. marketing is a great start for this topic. Yeah. Do you authorize him to translate into Spanish and share it yeah. with? Absolutely. I, I'd be honored for you to do so. Yeah, that, I'd be happy for you to do that. Thanks for asking. Awesome. I'm pretty sure I missed quite a few questions and maybe like a lot. We have almost 50 uh, people join us on different channels at the peak hour. So thank you again, Mark. And guys, make sure that you share this. And I'm going to randomly select three people to show you how much I love you guys and appreciate you for being here and how much I really love and appreciate everything Mark does and uh, just follow him and learn from him and just everywhere. Be a professional stalker. Yeah, thank you so much, Mark. Thank you. Bye, Thanks, everyone. everyone. Bye, everyone. See you guys next week. I will have uh, Chris Brogan on the show. Bye. <laughs>